To keep better track of the time logged in your company, the timesheet approval process can help you. Here's how to set that up. The timesheet approval process starts with setting up the timesheet periods for your company. These are the periods in which employees log their time and then get it approved by team leads or managers. In addition to this, you can also set up the scheduler for automatically sending email reminders to employees about their timesheets. We'll cover how to do that in this video. So why use the timesheet approval process? For team members, it encourages accountability for tracking time since there's a defined timesheet period in which to log time and get it approved. And for financial or accounting teams, timesheet periods ensure more accuracy. They can close the periods to prevent changes to the timesheet data, and then they can get accurate numbers for month-end calculations, such as payroll and customer billing. Here at Lunar Industries, we use the timesheet approval process so that we can keep on top of where we spend our time, and also we keep our accounting team happy, which is important. Let me show you how I set this up for us in Tempo Timesheets. And keep in mind that the setup for your company might be different. First off, Tempo teams are required for the timesheet approval process, so these are all of our teams here at Lunar Industries. And to set up timesheet periods, you need to have the Tempo Administrator permission. This is a global permission that's been granted to me by our JIRA Administrator. With that all done, from the Tempo settings, I'll set up the timesheet period in period configuration. I select January as the month to start the timesheet periods for the year. These periods are created for the whole year, even if you're only going to start using them later in the year. I'll select the first of each month to be the start day for the timesheet periods. This matches the financial period at Lunar Industries, which is a recommended thing to do. So make sure to check with your accounting team to see which start day works best for your company. Using the first of the month as the start day means that the period ends on the last day of the month, and this is when everyone completes their timesheets and submits them for approval. Then the accounting team extracts this log time data for month-end calculations, such as payroll and customer billing. They do these calculations at the beginning of the next month. At the bottom here, I'll make sure that the period used for approvals is set to monthly, which is the frequency at which we want to run the timesheet approval process. We find that monthly is frequent enough for us to run the approval process since there is some overhead involved in reviewing and approving timesheets. But you may want to do this weekly, so if that's the case, you can select weekly here and the approval process will run every week. You need to set the start day for the approval period in the weekly periods area here. It's best practice to have this week correspond to your pay period. I'll select Monday as the first day of the week here, even though we're running our approval period monthly. And that's because even with the monthly period, this setting determines how the week appears for everyone in my work. So here we have the standard Monday to Friday work week set up. I'm displaying Saturday and Sunday here, but I can hide that by clicking the gear icon and then turning off show weekends. Now there's a bit more space. So the timesheet period is set up. Now on to the next step, which is to configure the scheduler here. Using the scheduler is optional, but it lets us arrange when email reminders are automatically sent to the employees about the status of their timesheet, and also to finish logging their time. As well, it can schedule when the timesheets are automatically closed or frozen so that nobody can make changes to them. But this is not the same as closing the whole timesheet period itself. Let me show you what that means. I'll set the scheduler to run weekly on Friday. And this is when the automatic emails are sent out to all users to give them the status of their timesheets. And because I'm checking the Make Scheduler Close option, Friday is also the end date for logging time for the week. I'll give them a four-day buffer from the end date to the actual close date. This means that employees can log their time for the week until next Tuesday, which compensates for this being over the weekend. After that, they can't log time anymore for that week unless they get a grace period from their team lead, and I'll show you what that is a bit later. 
So you're probably wondering why is the scheduler set to weekly instead of monthly, like the timesheet approval frequency that I just set in the period configuration. It's because within the monthly timesheet period, we can use the scheduler to freeze or close the timesheets for logging time more frequently without needing to go through the approval process each time. So why are we doing this? Basically, it's good practice to have everyone log their time weekly instead of monthly so that they don't forget what they worked on. A month is a long time and people tend to leave things to the last day. This makes for easier time tracking for our employees and frequent logging makes for more accurate data that we can use. Now for the emails. In the email settings, I'll check this first box because we want everyone to get an email reminder on the end date, which is Friday. This first email gives them their timesheet status, and then they can check if they still have a few hours to log or if they're done. The reminders are sent out at midnight according to their JIRA system settings, so this reminder is sent on Friday at midnight, 11.59 to be exact. This isn't an optimal time to get a reminder, especially if you're out partying, so that's why we give employees until Tuesday to actually complete their timesheet. I'll check this second box so that emails are sent to only those who haven't completed their timesheet for the week. And I'll enter two days here so that they get the reminder to finish logging their time two days before the close date. Since the close date is Tuesday at midnight, this means that they will get the reminder on Sunday at midnight. Again, not great timing, but they'll see it on Monday morning as they're drinking their coffee. So that's it. We're all set up now for timesheet periods and approvals. Let me give you a rundown of what's going to happen according to what I just set up. The timesheet period starts on the first day of each month. All team members ideally finish logging their time for each week by end of day Friday, which is the end date for the weekly timesheet. On Friday at midnight, the scheduler automatically sends out an email to all employees giving them the status of their timesheet. On Sunday at midnight, two days before the close date, the scheduler automatically sends out another email reminder only to those who haven't completed their timesheets from the previous week. On Tuesday at midnight, which is the close date for the weekly timesheet, the scheduler automatically freezes the timesheets so that no more time can be logged for the previous week. On the last day of the month, the timesheet period ends. So everyone finishes up their timesheets and submits them for approval to their team leads or managers. These team leads or managers receive email notifications requesting timesheet approval, and then they review and approve or reject the timesheets. Now, there's one more very important thing that happens at the end of the period. The accounting team manually changes the state of the timesheet period here on the period management page. In the period configuration, I had set the timesheet periods to start in January, with the first being the first day of the period, and that's what you see here. All the periods are set up for the whole year. When the periods are open for all, anyone can log time, which is what we want for the current and future periods. When the period is over, our accounting team takes all the timesheet data and brings it into their accounting software. Then they set the period to open for approvers so that only those with the approved timesheet permission, such as a team leader manager, can make changes to their team's timesheets or approve them. They leave the period like this for a few days just to give a chance for team leads to make changes without needing to request that the period be reopened. However, your accounting team may want to close the period right away so you can do whatever works for your company. After a few days, the accounting team switches the period to closed for all so that nobody can make changes to the timesheets anymore for this period. And then they do their month-end calculations. Because the periods start in January, but we're in June now, we can simply close these older ones since we don't want anyone to log time to them. So that's how it works in a perfect world, but that's not always the case at Lunar Industries. Sometimes timesheets don't get finished or submitted in time. Here's a couple of things that we do to make things easier. Team members and team leads can use the Tempo mobile app to log their time and approve timesheets from wherever they are. 
Team leads can open a team member's timesheet even after the scheduler has closed or frozen them. They can give the team member a grace period in which they can finish logging their time and submit their timesheet for approval. The accounting team can manually reopen a timesheet period, either for everyone or only approvers, and then they can make changes. This is a bigger deal and usually has to be for a good reason, but it is possible. So that's how we set up timesheet periods and the scheduler for the timesheet approval process here at Lunar Industries. Thanks for watching and make sure to check out the other setup videos on our Tempo YouTube channel to learn more.